Okay, check out what I have today, a Network Denon AVR4310CI. This thing is a powerhouse. Look at the size of the transformer in this thing. Holy moly. So down in here, we've got individual amplifier boards that are like standing up, mounted to the heat sink, and they all mate on one common circuit board. And this thing powers up, and then it shuts down. Let me see if I can show you what's going on here. So I've got the red light, power the unit on, I get AV surround receiver, then it shuts down, and I get the blinking red light of death. So let me show you what I found on this thing. We'll troubleshoot it together, hopefully. So here's the schematic for the surround back right channel. And this is where I believe the problem lies. And the reason I know this is because pin eight and pin seven are the idling, they put an R in there, idling adjust test points. And if you follow those back, they go up here through a couple of 10K resistors and they're actually measuring the voltage across one of the two emitter resistors. And so I can measure the DC voltage to ground and see if there's a DC offset on this channel. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I've got my voltmeter set up in the 600 millivolt DC range, and I have one lead attached to one of the idling current test points, and the other lead is attached over here off the screen on that side to chassis ground. So let's go ahead and power this thing back up, and hopefully we'll get less than 600 millivolts. If not, I'll have to change the scale. And definitely we get over 600 millivolts. So I'll put it on volts. I'll power it up one more time. And I've got 62 volts of offset on this thing. So it's probably got a shorted output transistor. It might have some other issues going on. Let's just go ahead and put this in the 600 volt range. We can watch it in real time. All right, here we go, power on. Yeah, I've got 62 volts of offset. That's the B plus rail, basically. So let's go ahead and pull that surround back right channel out of this unit and see what we find. Okay, well I have the thing pretty much gutted at this point. The only thing remaining is the power transformer, the standby board, and it, it looks like another AC input, possibly standby. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. But let me show you all the screws that had to come out to get to this point. And then here's all the circuit boards that had to be dis jigsaw puzzled to get this thing apart. Man, a lot going on in this thing. And I finally got to the prize. This is what I wanted to get to. This is the power amplifier and power supply board. And this is the channel that I'm interested in over here. So I still have some more disassembly to do to be able to actually get the amplifier board out of this unit. All right, well, I finally got the prize out of the bottom of the Cracker Jack box. Got everything un as the case may be. Man, this thing is a puzzle to disassemble. Well, there is the surround back right amplifier board, as you can see labeled seven surround back right. And honestly, I was expecting to find a shorted output transistor. But if I do an ohmmeter test on these guys, six tenths of a volt between base and collector, 0.66 volts between base and emitter. And I'm seeing 2.4 volts between collector emitter on that one. So let's go to base collector, 0.595. Base emitter, 0.661. Collector emitter, I'm showing one volt drop in that direction. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull these off of the board because they're all showing virtually identical. I'll pull these off the board and we'll go ahead and see if we can test these four leaded transistors on the MK168 and see what it says. Okay, I have the DHCTA3 connected to the MK168. Let's go ahead and hit the test button and see what we get. It should come back as a PNP transistor, base collector emitter, and it does. And I see a gain of 137 and a forward voltage of 0.954 volts. And this is a Darlington transistor, but it does have an additional resistor between the two emitters. So that's probably why we get the odd voltage. Let's go ahead and test the NPN and see what it says. Okay, here is the test of the NPN. 
Same forward voltage drop almost identically, but it does have a higher gain of 210. Now let's go ahead and test the individual diodes that reside between pin 4 and 5. And on that one I do see 0.729 millivolts drop across a single diode. So let's go ahead and test the other one and see what it tests like. And I do see 1.67 volts across multiple diodes on that one. So why would there be a discrepancy? Let's look at the schematic of each transistor. So now I only saw 1.6-ish volts on the A transistor and they are showing five diodes in this thing. I would expect to see about three and a half volts drop across this transistor, but I'm only seeing 1.67. So I'm wondering if that could be the problem. I'd hate to tear apart another channel just to do a test, but I guess I could. But if you look on the C3 transistor, it only shows a single diode and I was showing about 7 tenths of a volt, which is perfectly fine on that one. But the main thing is I'm not showing any shorts on the transistor whatsoever. So I thought I'd just go ahead and test the other channel in circuit. Now this is the A transistor, so I should see about a 1.6 volt drop in one direction if the transistor on the surround back right channel is good. So let's go ahead and hit test and see what we get. And it's going to test them in both directions. And I do see 1.61 volts in one direction, which is perfectly fine. That's the forward bias of the actual transistor. So let's go ahead and test the C next. And I should see about 0.7 volts in one direction. And I am seeing 0.734 volts in one direction. So that tells me that the diodes in these transistors are basically matched identically. I don't think it's an output problem. I think it's going to be a driver issue at this point. Well, let's come down to this. Every component on the board tests fine, as far as I can tell. I tested all the diodes, all the transistors, everything is great. So I'm going to go ahead and supply external power to this thing. So what I've got here is a bridge rectifier out of an old receiver. This is the positive output. This is the negative output. This is the center tap of the transformer that goes to the common of the two capacitors. I added some 30K discharge resistors. They're quarter watt resistors, but they won't actually dissipate a quarter watt of energy until they're up to about 75 volts. And the capacitors I'm using are only 220 microfarad 100 volt capacitor, so not a lot of capacitance, but I just want to run this thing and get it up to voltage and see is it going to work. And aside from putting this thing all the way back together, I can't think of a more practical way to power this individual board up. All it needs is B plus, B minus, and ground. That's it. It does show a regulator B plus coming into the board, which is called filter minus B. I did some research. It's not actually connected to anything anywhere else in the circuit. So this is it. I'm going to go ahead and put my B plus, my B minus, and ground onto this board. I'll bring it up slowly and we'll watch the DC offset and see if it works or not. Okay, so here's what I've got. The brown lead, which is the positive output of the bridge rectifier. The black lead, which is the negative output of the bridge rectifier. And then back here, I've got the white lead, which is the center tap of the power transformer. So I'm going to have a positive and a negative voltage supplied. Over here on the board, pin one and two is the positive input, the brown lead. Pin three and four is the speaker output. I've soldered a blue lead onto that. Pin five and six are the negative input where the black lead goes. And then pin seven is the power supply ground. And I've got the white lead going to that. So I think everything is connected. I will connect a voltmeter to the blue lead to see if we have a DC offset and we'll bring this thing up slowly and see what happens. Okay, here we go. I've got the power supply set at zero volts AC going into the transformer right now and I'm gonna bring it up slowly. We're probably gonna see a couple of DC offsets until it gets up to a high enough voltage where the zeners start kicking in and things start regulating. But let's go ahead and see what happens. And I am watching the current very closely. If I see an issue with the current, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the switch and shut it down. And yeah, I'm definitely seeing a DC offset. I've only got about 40 volts AC going into it right now, and I'm getting 30 volts out of this unit. That is the problem. It should be regulated at this point. I'm actually up to just over 80 volts AC input. This thing should regulate perfectly at this point. So now I can actually do some voltage measurements and some troubleshooting on this board and find out what is actually going on with this thing.
Okay, so we'll try that one a second time. I wasn't actually pulling down the ground right here, which is derived from this connector. I did not have a ground lead attached to pin one. That's what pulls this 33K resistor to ground to keep the bias off of the differential amplifier right here. And so the voltage on the base of this transistor was creeping up, which is why I had a positive offset. So now I've attached a ground wire to pin one right there from the white lead, which is the common of the filter capacitor center tap. So we'll go ahead and hook it back up, put the voltmeter in the DC volt range. Get that kind of set up here where you can see everything. We'll fire it up again, see what happens. So I'm gonna set it on the 60 volt range. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, here we go, power on. I'm gonna ramp it up slowly and we'll see what happens. Now look at that, absolutely zero output. And that's 120 volts AC input. This amplifier is working perfectly fine. Let's try to feed an audio signal into it and see if we get a little bit of sound, even though I only have 100 microfarads of filtering on the positive and the negative, we should still get some kind of sound out of it with an analog input. Okay, so I'm gonna feed an audio input into it on pin two right here from my MP3 player. And I'm not really worried about it hurting the MP3 player because it has a 22 microfarad coupling capacitor right here. So the input is pulled down with the 470K resistor. It goes through a 220 ohm resistor and then a 33K resistor back to ground. I'm not worried about the input from my MP3 player, but I think we should get some sounds out of this thing. So as you can see, I've attached a gray lead right here, which is the input pin number two off of that connector. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what happens. Okay, here we go, power on. So there's my MP3 player. I'm actually controlling the volume from the MP3 player. It's working perfect. So I'm gonna say at this point, the problem is not with the amplifier module. I don't have a heat sink on it and the transistors are getting warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down. There's no heat sinking and I don't know what the bias is on these things, but it is actually working perfectly fine. So there's something else going on in this thing. So at this point, I'm thinking either a bad ground or this one amplifier is missing its B plus or B minus rail. That's all it can be. The input is capacitively coupled. Of course, if it's missing the ground right here, it would cause that exact same symptom. So possibly a pin fitment issue in the connectors where all these boards plug together, which is right here. So I'm gonna to have to take a very, very close look at all of the solder connections on this board and see if I see any, especially for the surround back right, that don't look good. I think they get all their grounds from the exact same point, so I'm not sure, but I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, this amplifier board is working 100% okay. So I think I'm gonna wrap up part one of this and we'll see what happens in part two. Everybody, thanks for making it to the end of this. Well, can't really call it a troubleshooting video, but it is a diagnostic nevertheless. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Now that is the best way to contact me. If you do send me a message through Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it might be weeks or even months before I get a chance to look at it. I hardly ever check those. Please, if you want to contact me, use norcal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. 
Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of what I hope is going to be a two-part video. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.